It seems like when they asked the audience who could do Mickey's voice, a lot of hands went up, and Goofy, not too many, went up. Can you guys do each other's voices? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't know. <laughs> Gosh, I can't. I, I will never claim to do it. Well, no. or really, do it. No. yeah, no. Uh, Wayne Allwine, who did the voice uh, Mickey for many years, always complained that he says I I voice a character that everyone can do. <laughs> you can get to the falsetto. It's a tone type of character. If you get into the falsetto, you're kind of in the ballpark. But what's lacking is the acting that Brett does. That's what really separates the, the people that can kind of do the voice and become the character. Mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, the acting is the, the, the part that's the hard part. Yeah, actually. yeah. The and maintaining it. Can you maintain yeah. the voice for like four hours mm -hmm. at a time? That's the hard part. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it's fun to hear other people's impressions yeah. and how eager they are to share them. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's just a fan. You know, we're all we're Absolutely. two of the biggest fans. So. Yeah. Well, uh, the story of Fantasmic is just that, for me, Fantasmic is well, Fantasmic has always been the most quintessential Disney show. Uh, the fact that it comes out of nowhere and it's this big, powerful, imaginative world is always so fascinating to me. And it inspired a lot of my dreaming and my creativity, uh, but also my love of Disney and love specifically for Mickey. Uh, so I used to play Fantasmic as a kid. My brother and I would put on our own shows. and. Um, I started doing voices by impersonating all the characters in the show, and that's actually where I started to figure out that I kind of sounded like Mickey. Um, so I did that for years growing up, and um, fast forward to a few years ago, they updated the show, and I was asked to, to voice Mickey in it, because they were adding a few more dialogue parts. Um, and at the time, there had been talk to, to leave Wayne Allwine's performance in for the last line, some imagination because it's such an iconic line, just to pay homage to him, and I completely agreed with that. Um, I actually felt odd going in to re-record the show in the first place, um, but I did, and uh, when I went to finally see it, uh, I was with my brother, who I used to play Fantasmic with, and we watched it together, and the whole time was kind of fun, you know, just reacting with one another to say, how cool is that? But then the final line came, and Mickey said, some imagination, huh? And it was me, and it was, just a, it was a total surreal full circle moment that it's, it's hard to put into words, um, but my brother turned to me, put his hand on my shoulder and said, did you ever think that when we were kids playing Phantasmic that that would be you someday? And it, it was, it's, it's that, that has been one of the most impactful moments in my career thus far. I've been voicing Mickey for about nine and a half years, going on ten, uh, which has flown by and is incredible to think about. Um, but in that moment, it was, it was really, uh, it was powerful to think. You know, I, the fact that I get to play even the smallest part in a legacy that is so huge and means so much to so many people. Um, yeah, it's just kind of, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's very special. For Bill, Fred has this great story about Fantasmic and hearing himself for the first time. Uh, is there any time you've been in a Disney park, heard your voice, and had that kind of wow moment? Oh, yeah. Um, Mickey's Movie Barn at Toontown. Uh, <laughs> Goofy and Donald are running the projector, some of Mickey's, you know, uh, movie clips and stuff, and uh, we got to ad-lib a lot of that. For some reason, it just turned into one of those sessions where we were adding jokes on our own, and it wasn't scripted, and they used a lot of them in the, in the event, and it was so much fun to go in, oh, they used it, oh, that was great, I wrote that, not only voiced it, but I wrote that. That was, uh, that was, and there, you know, anytime your voice pops up, you kind of, oh, okay, a talking toy or a mailbox that uh, talks or, you know, any, any kind of time that it, you aren't expecting the voice and it comes out of a speaker somewhere. It's always a little kind of unnerving. Oh, oh, okay, that's me. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> very strange. Coffee with yourself in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> me and all of a sudden, like, what? My wife tells a story. We were on the Disney cruise ship and... Um, uh, the alarm rang in the morning, and you know, I got uh, Jennifer got the phone. And I said, "Who was that?" She, "Oh, it was you." <laughs> <laughs> Just not a normal life. <laughs> That's so cool. Hi. Um, so it's really rad. You guys all kind of come from different areas of the art world. Um, do you guys have a dream art project that you'd like to do with Disney? I would love to do a full-length A-list feature Mickey and the gang movie. Hmm. I've always wanted to have that in there. I'm a little afraid to do it, I think. I don't yeah. know why. But just, uh, you know, just 
a big budget Mickey Mouse movie. Like the Muppets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'd like to see. I ditto that one. Maybe for the hundredth. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Maybe we've got ten years to work on that. Right. <laughs> voice work. What what advice would you give to people who want to look to do voice work and be the next one to carry the torch of the characters that you've uh, you've portrayed? Oh man. I think <laughs> And this goes for anything anyone asks advice for, when it's, if it's art or voiceover or whatever your interest may be. I think the key is practice, yeah. um, hard work, and just um, you know, a steadfast pursuit of your dream. If it's a passion of yours, yeah. then you, you, know, you make it a priority in your life and you pursue it. And so for me, it may have been my first time in the sound booth that day, first time being a voice actor, but I knew that I loved the character of Mickey, and I love the legacy and the story of Mickey, and that was what was my drive. You know, I wanted to represent that character. I wanted to play a part in preserving that character. Um, so I think my advice is, has always been, you know, pursue your creative passions. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, I, t I teach uh, voiceover via Skype, and people, you know, hopeful kids that want to come out to Hollywood or get involved in some way. And I always tell them uh, the main <coughs> things are uh, get rich parents because it's very, very competitive and you know, take a lot of rejection. Uh, number two, and what I learned early from a mentor of mine, Dawes Butler, who was a great voice artist who did all the Hanna-Barbera cartoons, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, and about 40 others. He was the one that really said, you're not doing voices. It's not about the voice. It is about uh, acting. It's not voice acting, it's voice acting. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on the acting. So I tell, and get in front of an audience. Learn, uh, stand-up was the best training ground I ever had because you have to learn how to say a line. You see it on the paper, you've got to make it jump off the paper and become alive. You have to give it life and in a way that entertains. And stand-up really taught me how to do that because in the booth you just get a script and you're not looking at anything, you just take the lines and make them real so and again uh, what Brett said you've got to do it because you're not fame and fortune and all of these other goals you've got to do it because you love it passion what they said <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brett did you ever get a chance to meet talking Mickey uh, I have had a chance to meet talking Mickey on a few occasions yes and then how was that because Very you did the voice right <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was it was great. Uh, it was I worked really closely with the team on that project for many years, uh, and I was really excited about it because of what it meant for the guest experience. Um, but it was weird. I didn't really go have my own interaction for a few years after it had even been released. Um, but I think two trips ago, when I was down here in Magic Kingdom, I paid a stop. Mickey's uh, magician, whatever it was called over there. Um, yeah, and it was. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool because um, even though I play a very special part in the character, you know, Mickey is still Mickey to me, and I will always be that little kid in my clubhouse playset, just being a, a fan. So it's it's it was great to talk to Mickey. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, since we're here celebrating Mickey, for anyone who wants to answer, do you have a favorite Mickey cartoon that stands out above the others? Brave Little Taylor and the Pointer are my two. Gosh, there's so many. Uh, very, uh, Prince and the Popper was a uh, great, great one. There were two yeah. Mickeys. That's <laughs> <laughs> two Mickeys is always better than one. Um, you're very strongly identified with the characters that you portrayed for so many years. Do you ever think about what you would have done if you weren't Goofy, if you weren't Mickey, if you weren't... <laughs> <Asuka>? <laughs> I'd be on the off-ramp of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I think any actor would say, that's something you think about every day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. I don't, I don't know. Uh, my background was radio and stand-up. I don't know if I would have stayed in stand-up for very long. <laughs> it's, it's very tough. Uh, gosh, that's a real good question, but I have no idea what I would do. <laughs> Well, I went to school for illustration, and I started my career as an artist and designer, and, I, mm -hmm. I, and I've maintained that throughout the years, maybe not as prevalent as before, but I think I would definitely do something in the arts, uh, still create, draw, paint, build. That's my other passion. Before we go, can we hear Mickey and Goofy tell us to have a good day or say something? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? 
We're so glad you're here. It's been wonderful hanging out with you, and we hope to see you real soon. Right, Grief? Right? Yeah, and have a great time while you're here. <laughs> so long. That's great. Well, now I feel like we have to end on that. <laughs>